Welcome to the fourth and final part of Secrets of the New York City Subway. In this video, I will be going around the borough of Manhattan on the subway and finding interesting things to look out for yourself. So, I am starting all the way up near Inwood at 191st Street Station on the 1 train. Now, remember, before the subway system, there used to be multiple different subway companies. All of the number lines were run by the IRT, the Interborough Rapid Transit. So, at the entrance of Broadway at 190th Street, there's this old sign that still says IRT Subway. Many people will just walk past it and never look up to notice it at all. I headed down Manhattan on a one train. A portion of the stretch was actually part of the original IRT Subway back in 1904. The trains back then only consisted of a few cars, meaning that the platforms were way shorter than what we're used to today. So, next time you're at 96th Street Station on 7th Avenue line, look to each side and you will see those original platforms buried into the wall. Then, take a southbound train out of the station and as you look to your right, there is an abandoned station out in the darkness. This was 91st Street Station, and it was one of the original 28 original stations. However, it closed in 1959 as a result of being too close to its adjacent stations, 86th and 96th Street Stations. Now, 145th Street on the 3 train has a strange oddity in which it can only fit the first 5 cars. This wasn't the only subway station in which it couldn't fit all the train cars, as you will see later. But for now, just make sure you're in the first 5 cars when getting off that stop. 81st Street Station is of course right next to the Museum of Natural History, and is notorious for having an entrance that leads directly into the museum itself. But I also find cool that the platforms are decorated with different animals. At 59th Street Columbus Circle, the disused middle platform on the 8th Avenue line is used as a passageway between the 7th Avenue line platforms. But that's not the most interesting thing here. The station, of course, is named after Christopher Columbus, and on the walls of the 7th Avenue line platforms, you can see decorations of Columbus' ship, the Santa Maria. One step down the 8th Avenue line at 50th Street, there's an unused corridor at the back of the northbound platform which leads to the lower level. Actually, the stations have a few disused entrances and exits, although they may not be obvious at first. I had one stop down again to 42nd Street Station, which has staggered platforms and abandoned lower level containing a single track and platform. And, on the southbound platform, there's a yellow hatch that leads down to the lower level. The platform itself was divided into two, and the portions of it was destroyed to make way for the Hudson Yards extension. Next up, 34th Street. At one of the exits on the Uptown platform, the ceiling has been removed to uncover old signage which you can go see right now. There is one sign that still has a 9 train, and a mural depicting Long Island. I had a quick stop at Times Square 42nd Street to look at the Lichtenstein mural at the mezzanine of the station, which is something else that people walk past without appreciating. Then, I transferred on a Q train and went onto the 2nd Avenue line. This is the newest bit of the subway opening in 2017. Actually, this is only phase 1 out of 4 of the entire line. Phase 2 will take up the line to meet with the Lexington Avenue line at 125th Street Station, and phases 3 and 4 will take it down to Lower Manhattan. The second avenue line was actually proposed over 100 years ago, and since then, we've only had a portion of what it was actually going to be. You can actually see a provision of phase 3 on a Q train. As you're headed down after leaving 72nd Street, you can see where the tunnel would continue further just before you curve off 2nd Avenue. I headed out of the subway to find something that isn't really related to the subway itself, but I find it worth mentioning. At the entrance to Queensboro Bridge, there's this odd looking structure saying entrance and exit. This is a remnant of a trolley system that ran across the bridge. You may also remember that from part 1 of this series, the 2nd Avenue elevator also ran across Queensboro Bridge as well, which means that on the Manhattan side of the bridge, old infrastructure of the line is visible as well. I went back into the subway and headed for 34th Street on the 7th Avenue line. At the entrance to the very front of the northbound platform, there is a window you can look through which shows a disused portion of the station. But the amazing thing about it is that the ceiling was actually part of the original Penn Station that was built back in 1910. On the 8th Avenue platforms at 34th Street, there are these instruments up top that you can wave to play some sounds. It was installed in 1996 as New York Urban Musical Instrument. Next, I went to Grand Central Station, which was opened in 1913 with a grand terminal building reminiscent of the original Penn Station building. This station has a ton of history that deserves its own separate video. But for now, I'm heading to the 42nd Street Shuttle, which has gone under major reconstruction recently. The middle track of the shuttle service is being removed to make way for more space at both stations of the line. And, at the time of filming, construction was still going on, but that is not the only interesting thing to see there. 
Go on track 1 and you will see that it actually continues further at Grand Central Station. Well, this track leads to the Lexington Avenue line. Why is that? Well, I will explain in a minute. Now here, you will see a sign that says track 1 and 4. So, where is track 2? If you see here, one of the platforms is slightly wider than the other. This is where track 2 would have been. At 42nd Street, there is this opening where you will see the 7th Avenue tracks and 1, 2, and 3 trains pass by. But also, look closely and you will see empty paths where tracks would have been that merge with the 7th Avenue line. So what's going on? The Lexington Avenue line, the 42nd Street Shuttle, and the 7th Avenue line were all part of the original IRT subway from 1904 which started from City Hall and went on Manhattan, turning left and going where the 42nd Street Shuttle is today, and then it went up to 157th Street. That is why there is this one track connection between the shuttle and the Lexington Avenue line at Grand Central Station. Between 23rd Street and Union Square on the Lexington Avenue line, there is an abandoned station, 18th Street, which was another original station from 1904. Just like 91st Street Station, it was also closed because it was too close to another station, 14th Street Union Square, which is where I'm headed next. This station has two abandoned side platforms as you can see here, but what makes this station special is that the platforms are on a curve, which means that they have to be extended in order to reach the trains themselves. You can see them in action right here. At Bleecker Street, there is this cool light decoration on the ceiling on the uptown platform. This was actually part of a new connection that allowed you to go from the uptown 6th train to the 6th avenue line. Another oddity of that is that when the new connection was built, the uptown platform had to be extended south, meaning that the northern tip had to be abandoned. Which means that you can still see that abandoned portion as you take an uptown 6th train heading out of the station. Next, here is one of the most well-known secrets in the subway system. It's at Delancey Street Station. Go to the northern end of the platform, and you can't fail to miss this huge open area. This belonged to a trolley system which began service in 1908 and ran over the Williamsburg Bridge and to various parts of Brooklyn. However, the terminal was abandoned in 1948, leaving this somewhat eerie tone to the place. That's a good J train down to Bowery, and it's along here where there are two other disused tracks, because originally, this section was going to have two outer local tracks and two inner express tracks. Its main purpose was to serve the streetcars, but once they were discontinued, there was no need for express tracks, and so northern bound trains were moved to the what were the southbound express tracks. If you look through the openings in the wall at Bowery and Canal Street, you can get a good look at the abandoned platforms. Next station is Chamber Street, one of the most dilapidated stations in the entire system. Actually, what I'm showing you right now used to be even more dingy, but recently it has been renovated. The station had two abandoned side platforms, with one of them still being visible and the other consumed by a wall. There is also an abandoned side platform as well. Now, if you take a train heading out of the station going uptown, there are two tracks that turn and curve off. These are part of the Nassau Street Loop, which were tracks that were connected to the Manhattan Bridge. However, in 1967, it was abandoned upon the completion of the Christie Street connection, tracks that connected the 6th Avenue line to the Manhattan Bridge and the Nassau Street line just before the Williamsburg Bridge. Now, Broad Street is the terminus of the Nassau Street Line, but the tracks themselves used to go further and connect with the R train at the Montague Street Tunnel. This was served by the M train back when it was brown and went south to Brooklyn. Then, I head up to Canal Street to switch onto the Broadway Line, which sees the express tracks splitting from the local tracks to head towards the Manhattan Bridge. However, this wasn't the original plan from the start. What was going to happen was that tracks from the Manhattan Bridge were going to continue east past Canal Street Station with no connection to the Broadway line. And the express tracks on the Broadway line would have continued south and dipped down to a lower level at City Hall, where it would then proceed to the Montague Street Tunnel. As for the local tracks, they would have ended at City Hall Station at the upper level, the platforms that are still in use today. But what ended up happening was that the express tracks took a completely different route by going over the Manhattan Bridge instead of through the Montague Street Tunnel. This meant that the local tracks now had to be extended to the Montague Street Tunnel, with the lower level of the City Hall Station becoming redundant, since the express tracks no longer served it as it took another route. So, at Canal Street, you can see two disused express tracks as they go down to the abandoned lower level. And, if you go to the next stop, City Hall, there are blocked off stairways that lead down to the disused platforms. Also, at the southern end of the northbound platform, the tracks take an awkward curve and descent. This is because it is actually taking the place of where the express tracks would have gone. I got off at Whitehall Street and transferred into the 1 train at South Ferry. 
It's here where the IRT used to have a curved platform, called the South Ferry Loop. Back then, South Ferry Station was on a curve, with the tracks looping back over the line. Only the first five cars of the trains could use the platform. The platform had to be extended to meet the train, just like at Union Square Station. However, in 2009, a new platform opened for the one train, until it was destroyed by Hurricane Sandy in 2012, meaning that the old South Ferry Loop was used once again. Then, in 2017, the newer platform was reopened, which meant that the South Ferry Loop was abandoned for good. At the mezzanine of the station, you can still see the boarded up entrance to the loop platform. And, as you head into South Ferry on a one train, the tracks that would have led to the old platform are still there. But, if you take another look at this picture right here, you can see to the right another loop. This was the inner loop at South Ferry, and that track actually leads to Bowling Green Station as part of the Bowling Green Shuttle. If you go to Bowling Green Station, you can see an abandoned platform that served the now discontinued shuttle. Also, while I was on the Lexington Avenue line, I headed up one stop to Wall Street Station, where there's a disused wooden ticket booth which dates back to 1905. Now, Wall Street Center Cortland Station was not the original name, it used to be called just Cortland Street. However, the station was severely damaged during 9-11, and so, it was reconstructed into a newer looking station. I took a train one stop to Fulton Street, which had the new Fulton Center opening in November of 2014. The glass ceiling is stunning, and there are many shops through the complex, so you should go check it out for yourself. But for now, I went on the Lexington Avenue line yet again to finish up. Between Canal Street and Brooklyn Bridge City Hall, there's yet another abandoned station, Worth Street, which closed because it was too close to City Hall Station, which is where I'm wrapping up, as I find the most infamous abandoned station on the entirety of the New York City subway, the City Hall Loop. When the IRT opened the first underground subway in 1904, the line started at City Hall Station on a loop with the platform being on a curve. However, it had to be abandoned because it couldn't facilitate the ever-increasing length of the trains. Now, of course everyone knows that the way to see it is to get on a 6 train at the current City Hall Station and look to your right as you will see the original station in all of its glory. The architecture of the station is just amazing, and it only cost $2.75 to go around and have a quick look at the abandoned station. This, in my opinion, is my favorite secret in the entire series. So this was the fourth and final part of Secrets of the New York City Subway. I hope you enjoyed this series. I have more videos planned for the future. So, in the meantime, consider subscribing and liking this video, and comment down below what was your favorite secret in this entire series. I will have something up by next week.